let's talk about angular momentum and angular impulse. The big equation you will need in this chapter is this. It's called the principle of angular impulse and momentum. The first term is called the initial momenta, the second term is called the angular impulse, and the last term is called the final momenta. It doesn't mean a lot like this, so let's break down each term so we know what they mean. Angular momentum is the moment of a particle's momentum about a point. Yeah, sounds confusing, but let's say we have a particle like this, and it's moving along a curved path, and it's along the xy plane. We can easily find the momentum by multiplying mass times velocity. But let's say we want to figure out the angular momentum about a random point, or the z-axis, which we will label O. We can do that by multiplying the perpendicular distance from the z-axis to the line of action of mass times velocity, or in other words, momentum. This is when it's a scalar. If we want to figure out the angular momentum when we're looking at a vector formulation, which means the particle is now moving along a space curve, it's pretty similar to before. But now, we're going to use a position vector from point O to the particle, and take the cross product of it with mass times velocity. When we do this, we need to make sure that both the position vector and the mass times velocity is expressed in Cartesian vector form. This will make a lot more sense when we take a look at examples. Angular impulse is the moment about the axis for a duration of time. So let's say we have a moment represented by this equation applied to the z-axis from 0 seconds to 3 seconds. Then we take the integral to find the angular impulse. All of this will make more sense with examples, so let's get started. In this problem, we need to determine the speed of the ball when time equals 2 seconds. We can head straight into an equation of angular impulse and momentum. Since the moment is applied about the z-axis, we can write our equation for the z-axis as well. Another way of thinking is that the ball is spinning around the z-axis. The initial momenta can be found by multiplying the distance from the axis, so that's 1.5 meters. Then we multiply it by the mass, that's 10 kilograms. And lastly, we multiply it by the initial velocity, which is 2 meters per second. For the angular impulse, the time starts at 0 seconds and we need the velocity at 2 seconds, so that's the upper bound. And the moment about the z-axis is given to us in the question. On the other side of the equation, we have the same as the initial momenta, except we don't know the velocity, and that's exactly what we're trying to find. Let's start solving. We get 3.47 meters per second, which is the speed of the ball at 2 seconds. Let's take a look at this question, where we need to find the angular momentum of the particle about point P. So first, we need to figure out where the particle and point P is with respect to the origin. We're going to use the location of the particle at the start to figure out the angular momentum, but you can also do this using the final location of the particle. It's the exact same method. So for the starting location of the particle, we see that it's at 2i, negative 1.5j, plus 2k. For the location of point P, we see that it's at negative 1i, plus 1.5j, plus 2k. Now we need a position vector from point P to the starting location of A. If you picked point B, then you would need a position vector from point P to B. So our position vector is each coordinate of point A minus each coordinate of point P. Let's simplify it. Next, we need to express the velocity in Cartesian form. To do that, we need a position vector from the starting location of the particle to the final location of the particle. In other words, from point A to B. So as before, let's write down the location of point B. Now for our position vector. Let's simplify it. Since we're trying to express our velocity in Cartesian form, we also need a unit vector. Hopefully, this is familiar to you from your statics class. So to find the unit vector, we first need to find the magnitude of our position vector. Next, we divide each term in our position vector by the magnitude, which gives us the unit vector. We can finally express the velocity in Cartesian form by multiplying the unit vector by the velocity. So we're going to multiply each term by 6. Now we got our velocity expressed in Cartesian form. All that's left to do is find the angular momentum. For that, we're going to use the equation for angular momentum in vector formulation. We're going to take the cross product, 
If you don't remember or need a refresh on doing it, please check the description below. Don't forget, our velocity is multiplied by the mass, which is 3 kilograms. Let's find the determinant, and that's our answer. If you use the position vector from P to B, then you'd use that vector instead of the vector from P to A. You'll get the same answer. Let's take a look at one last example. In this problem, we need to find the time it would take for the sphere to attain a speed of 3 meters per second. We can head straight into an equation of angular impulse and momentum. We're going to look at just the z-axis, since that's the axis the spheres are spinning around, which we can see because it's a top-down view given to us. So for the initial momenta, we have a length of 0.4 meters multiplied by the mass of the sphere, multiplied by its initial velocity, which is zero since it's starting from rest. We have two spheres, so we can multiply all of this by two. Now for the angular impulse. From zero seconds to a certain time, a moment of 8t is applied about the z-axis. So that's going to be our angular impulse. Now on the other side of the equation, we have the final momenta, which is pretty much the same as the initial momenta, but now the spheres are spinning with a velocity of 3 meters per second. All we need to do is solve for the time, and we get 1.34 seconds. So it took the spheres 1.34 seconds to achieve a speed of 3 meters per second that should cover the types of problems you will face in this chapter. I hope this helped you and thanks for watching. Best of luck with your studies.